Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. Today we are going to start a topic genetics and society part 2. What is the importance of genetic engineering? By now you know what genetic engineering is. It is the engineering of the gene or the changing the DNA or the RNA with whatever is the genetic material of an organism. Genetic engineering where it is used and what, what is the importance of genetic engineering? Uh, it is used for manufacture of compounds like antibodies, vaccines, hormones, vitamins and enzymes. Many a times we have seen that suppose a patient is suffering from a disease and it is not able to produce enough antibodies. So the antibodies can be produced artificially in the bioreactors and can be administered to the patient. Then vaccines are produced by the use of genetic engineering. You know what vaccines are. Vaccines are basically the attenuated organism which cause the disease. Once they are given to the person, it creates the immunity in the body of an organism. So vaccines can be produced with the help of a genetic engineering hormones, vitamins and enzymes. They are also produced when we use the genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is also used for breaking down the pollutants by making recombinant bacteria. In nature, nature has created the pathways for the breakdown of the pollutants and we can always select out the bacteria say some metal resistance gene if they have we can take them recombine them in the bacteria which can be used to clean the environment of those pollutants. It is used in making gene banks or gene library. We have already talked about the gene banks then it is used in gene therapy. Some of the diseases uh, say let us take an example of a thalassemia and uh, person who is suffering for, from this disease, it is a genetic defect and if in the embryonic stage we can incorporate this particular repaired gene into the body of an organism of an individual uh, at the developmental stages only, then the person is cured of that disease and he can lead a healthy life. So that was the one example of gene therapy and it can be used at lot many places. And then in raising the transgenic plants. Transgenic plants are the plants in which some foreign gene has been added like a herbicide resistance. What are transgenic microbes and plants? Transgenic organisms are genetically modified organisms. Uh, whose genome has been altered by adding a gene or genes from other organism. The examples of transgenic organisms used for human welfare are in case of microbes, human insulin gene added to bacterial genome, then bacteria are used for decomposing poll pollutants and bacteria are used for the extraction of metals in metallurgy. Then in plants, the herbicide and pest resistant plants have been produced. Example is the Bt cotton and Bt brinjal. The gene from the Bacillus thuringiensis has been incorporated into the plant body. In animals, gene for growth hormone has been inserted into pig and fish so that their body size increases. And uh, in transgenic goat, they have produced a blood clotting protein in their milk which can be given to patients suffering from hemophilia that is again a genetic disorder. Now how in Bt crops the gene for the pest resistance has been introduced. The gene which is responsible for providing the pest resistance is a cry gene which produces an endotoxin. This cry gene which produces endotoxin was transferred to obtain a Bt transgenic plant. As you can see a bacillus here and the cry gene 
the cryogen is isolated from the bacillus and has been incorporated into the plant. Now this plant is resistant to the pest. When the insect feeds on the transgenic plant, because plant is already synthesizing all parts of the plant, they contain an active protoxin. And once the insect eats the plant, the proteinase digestion in the insect guts makes converts this protoxin into an active toxin which ultimately kills the insect and as you must have read in the newspaper also that these Bt cotton and Bt brinjal these crops have been intensively used even in India. Now before any country uh, acquires some uh, transgenic plant or an animal, then certain biosafety norms or procedures are to be followed. So in year 2000, many countries agreed to a biosafety protocol by which safety of using the GM, GM crops is first ascertained before using them because many a times what happens certain infectious organism can uh, make it uh, can cause a disease or uh, spread an infection in a laboratory. So before we uh, get any plant from the other from some other country into our country we need to follow certain biosafety procedures and norms. In India the Department of Biotechnology in compliance with the rules of Environment Protection Agency grants the permission for use of the GM crops. GM are the genetically modified organisms or the GM crops. Now biopiracy, what is biopiracy? Biopiracy is the process of commercially exploiting naturally occurring biochemical or genetic material especially by obtaining patents that restricts its future use while failing to pay fair compensation to the community where it originates. Uh, as in the case of neem that is azadirecta indica, lot many compounds are produced in this plant and the people they got the patent for this. But later on it was revoked. So biopiracy is common especially in the countries which are quite developed. They take up the genetic material from the center of diversity and get it biopatented. Uh, but now the norms are becoming stricter, stricter and stricter and it's not that easy to get the patent of any material. Now what is biopatent is a right granted by government to an inventor to prevent others from commercial use of the invention. When patent is granted for biological entities and products obtained from them, these patents are called the biopatents. Now biopatent can be granted for strains of a microorganism, cell lines, genetic genetically modified plants and animals, DNA sequences because you know we can artificially synthesize the DNA sequences and use them further then proteins encoded by DNA sequences, biotechnological processes as we have studied this PCR chain reaction, uh, polymerase chain reaction and invention or a discovery, a concept or design or for the improvement of an earlier, earlier invention the biopatents can be granted. Now another technique which has been used very frequently in the forensic sciences or to determine the paternity is the DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting is a technique developed by Alec Jeffrey in 1984. It is a method used to identify individual from a sample of DNA by looking at unique patterns in their DNA. Now what are these unique patterns uh, in human beings? There is a lot of DNA that is also known as the junk DNA and the repeated sequences that is V and TR sequences, variable, 
nuclear tandem repeats. These sequences they do not code for anything and they are passed on from generation to the next generation. So, the and they show a lot of polymorphism. So, these DNA sequences are used in the DNA fingerprinting to determine or uh, uh, the uh, paternity test. It is also called DNA typing, DNA profiling, genotyping or identity testing. Now, the steps involved in DNA fingerprinting are first is the isolation of DNA from the sample. Then increase the quantity of DNA sample by polymerase chain reaction. Then digestion of the DNA by enzyme restriction endonuclease to uh, create sticky ends and the separation of DNA fragment by gel electrophoresis. How the DNA seg uh, segments are separated in a gel electrophoresis is based on the charge and mass ratio of the DNA fragments. And uh, we know that when we make the fragments, the fragments are of different size and they do carry different charge on them. This is an example which shows that how we can determine or ascertain who is a suspect of a crime scene. The blood sample is there and then we have a suspect 1 and suspect 2. We run the DNA extracted from the blood sample which we have collected from the crime scene onto a gel electrophoresis as we can see in the first set there are two red bands formed on a gel electrophoresis. This blue plate like structure is a gel electrophoresis and in the case and then we collect the DNA sample from the suspect 1. We run it on a gel electrophoresis in that we got only one band and then we run the DNA sample collected from the second suspect and as we can see clearly the DNA sample of the second suspect matches with the DNA sample collected from the crime scene. So, we can ascertain that suspect number 2 is actually the person who has committed a crime and we have also shown some repeat sequences. The in the first case there is 112 repeat sequences and uh, one set of 16 repeat sequences. While in the case of suspect 1 there are only 12 and 12 repeat sequences and in the case of actual person who has committed a crime the, the DNA is having a 12 repeat sequences and the 16 repeat sequences that is similar to what we have obtained at a place of crime. Now, what is genome and genomics? Genome is a total genetic material of an organism and genomic is the analysis of genome data and finding out the function of the nucleotide sequences in the DNA of an organism. Now, we know the genome sequence of E. coli, Saccharomyces, Arabidopsis and also human genome has been mapped. Uh, this human genome mapping was a very big project and the human genome is approximately 3 into 10 to 10 raised to power 9 base pairs and scientists they have identified more than 20 to 25,000 genes in a human DNA. In this slide we can see that what all diseases the gene for various diseases are present on which chromosome. Say in chromosome number 1 there is a gene for a Gaucher disease and in the X chromosome there is a gene for muscular dystrophy. So, we know that the human genome has been mapped and this is a sketch of what all uh, defective genes are present on human, human chromosome and that too at which particular chromosome like in chromosome number 11 there is a gene for sickle cell anemia in which the blood cells take the shape of a sickle and are not able to carry enough oxygen. Now, as in the previous slide we have seen that there are lot many uh, defects in the human genome and uh, which are present in certain individuals. So, whenever uh, people suppose a person who is a thalassemic and uh, a carrier thalassemic 
both the uh, individuals, the wife as well as husband or both the parents are carrier for thalassemia and if they want to have a child, so they can always go to genetic counsellor to find out whether they should have a child or not. So genetic counselling is an advice given regarding genetic disorder to a couple so that they can decide whether to have a child or not if their earlier born is suffering from some genetic disorder or they have a family history of genetic disorder. And this work of genetic counselling uh, is done by pedigree analysis. Uh, pedigree analysis is a method to identify a pattern of inheritance of a particular trait among humans. How do we do pedigree analysis? As you can see in this diagram, the blue box and the square one represents square represents the males and blue represents the affected males means they are suffering from alkaptonuria and the circle represents the female partner and yellow color shows that the individual is not affected. So the parents are the male is affected so it is a carrier we can say also and the female is unaffected. When they produce a progeny, the male will produce both uh, and we already know that alkaptonuria is a recessive disorder. In the second generation, again the male is affected and the female will become the carrier now because she has the uh, heterozygous, this particular gene in a heterozygous condition, capital A that is the normal one and the small a which is a recessive gene for the alkaptonuria. Then in the third generation also some of both males as well as the females are the carriers we can see. So if we study the inheritance of character for the number of generations then it is known as the pedigree analysis and through pedigree analysis the genetic counsellor can always suggest what is the chances of the individual who is a carrier or is affected by a disease, what percentage or what are the chances of the person that he will bear a normal child. So pedigree and through pedigree analysis we can find out whether the child who is to be born is going to be normal or affected. I think with this we have covered genetic engineering, DNA fingerprinting, pedigree analysis and genetic counselling. So you must have enjoyed this chapter. Thank you.